In this video, we're gonna continue our ongoing series of affordable DIY projects by building an EMP-proof Faraday cage with items that you can get at your local store. I'm gonna take you through all the items you need. We'll cover the step-by-step -step process to build this, we'll ground it, we'll test it, and finally, we'll discuss what you should be putting inside of it. What is its purpose? So what is a Faraday cage and what problem are we trying to solve here? Simply put, a Faraday cage is an enclosure built to protect electronic devices from an electromagnetic pulse or EMP that can overload and fry them. So what is an EMP? An EMP or electromagnetic pulse is a brief burst of electromagnetic energy, and these can be the result of a nuclear blast. Additionally, events like a coronal mass injection or a CME are large expulsions of plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona. There have been such events recorded, such as a Carrington event of 1859. I did a whole video on the channel a few years ago that goes into a lot of detail if you'd like to learn more about this. Now, by building one of these, we can protect important electrical devices in a small, affordable setup that's easy to carry and transport. Items needed. Each one of these items can be purchased at most local chain stores and on websites like Amazon. Several of the items you probably already have. I'll put links to each one of these if you'd like to buy them online. The first is a metal can, about 20 bucks. Pliers, about five to $10. Aluminum foil, around $5. Sandpaper, $2. Cardboard box, usually you have some of these laying around. Tape, $5. Grounding wire, about 10 to 15 bucks. N95 mask, $4. Scissors or knife, $5. We come out to around 60 to $65, depending on which of these items that you have on hand. How to build it. To be effective, a Faraday cage needs four things. It needs to be covered with conductive metal. It needs to be properly grounded. It needs to be adequately surrounded by whatever it's protecting. And it needs to be adequately insulated by being placed on non-conductive surfaces, such as wood, cardboard, or rubber mat. We'll talk about grounding in a moment, but let's go ahead and build this out. So let's start out with our metal ammo can. First, let's remove the lid off of the top by gently pushing the lid to the side until it pops off. Next, we'll need to remove the rubber gasket from the lid of our ammo can. Why do we need to remove this rubber gasket? Well, the MP signals we're trying to protect against can actually pass through rubber. And as a result, this rubber sill that I just removed from the lid creates a gap between the metal lid and the box itself that will allow energy to come inside of our box. So it's gotta go. Now this rubber sill is securely connected to the lid, so we'll use a pair of pliers or a knife to remove it. Now that the rubber sill is out, we'll need to sand off the paint under the lid where the rubber sill was, along with sanding off the paint on the top of the box itself. Now one tip before you start sanding, notice these metal brackets that have held our rubber sills in place. Be careful with these surfaces as they can be sharp. Wearing a pair of gloves may be advisable. Now we're sanding these two surfaces to make a good connection between the lid and the box. Now you can either use sandpaper to remove the paint or a Dremel as shown here. Also, you probably will want to wear a mask to prevent breathing in any dust from the paint or metal shavings. Now, the metal lid, when closed, must have direct contact all the way around with the box itself. There must be no gaps or crevices. We'll use aluminum foil to accomplish this. Start off by doubling up the aluminum foil, folding it on itself. We're just trying to make it thick like the rubber seal we just removed. We'll then push it back under the metal brackets. Again, be careful as these can be sharp and gloves would be helpful. We wanna do this all the way around the top of the lid to form a complete metal enclosure. Now that we've added the aluminum foil, expect the closure of the lid to be difficult. You may have to adjust the thickness of the aluminum foil you've just put in the lid. Next, we'll add cardboard inside the box. This is the insulation inside our metal box to prevent our sensitive electrical devices from touching the metal. Measure your cardboard by putting it next to the box and then cut the cardboard based on the dimensions. The cutting doesn't have to be perfect, but we just wanna make sure the cardboard sits inside the box so that nothing inside our box will be able to touch the metal sides. Now, once we have the cardboard inside of our box, simply tape along the edges to hold everything in place. We'll cut and add one more piece of cardboard to fit on top to prevent things from touching the metal lid. How to ground it. A Faraday cage doesn't necessarily have to be grounded to work. Being inside a metal box may reduce the impact of a weak electromagnetic field, but it won't help against a strong one. No significant current can flow without a path, hence the need for grounding. 
By connecting the ammo can electrically to the ground, we ensure the discharge of any accumulated energy from our Faraday cage is discharged. And without grounding, an electrical charge will remain on the exterior of a Faraday cage. We don't want that. Now shown here, I've got a grounding cable. You can buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's in custom lengths. I went with an eight gauge wire. Green is a standard grounding wire color, so I decided to stick with it for simplicity's sake. Now I removed the insulation from one end of the line and put it under the lid where it closes on top of the box where we get a good tight point of connection. Now on the other end, I need to also remove the insulation and then connect the line to a ground. And in my house, I've got a fully exposed metal pipe that comes into my garage from under the ground, so I'll attach it here. Now, of course, if you have a grounding rod already in your yard, you can use that as well. Now, I'll place our newly built EMP box on a wooden surface, making sure it's not touching anything metallic. And with the grounding wire connected to our box and the pipe, it should be protected, and if hit by a strong EMP, it can ground out to the metal pipe. How can we test it? There's one way we can test this. We're gonna place a radio inside the box. A radio requires receiving a signal to work. And if the device receives a signal while inside the box, it means a radio frequency is making its way in to the box, which we're trying to prevent. Now, first we'll crank this radio all the way up. The number one volume Harley dealer group in all of California. That's Huntington Beach, Harley. Then we'll put it inside the box with the sound cranked all the way up still. Now, once we close the lid and put our microphone next to the box, if we don't hear any music, we know it's not receiving a signal. Presented by Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Morongo, good times. Hopefully good times on the way for Patrick Sandoval tonight. 7 and 12, ERA 4.31. Brian Wu gets to start the rookie for the... And as we can see, we hear nothing from inside the box. After building your Faraday cage, I would encourage you to test it. Rigorous testing involves some advanced equipment, but the method we just described is adequate for our purposes. What should you put inside of it? I recently asked my community this question and I got some great responses back. Essentially, what you put in here is really up to you. What are the most important electrical devices that you'd like to protect? Would it be something like a ham radio or these uh, to, you know, to walkie talkies? Would you want some type of flashlight or some type of hand crank radio? Now, several people in my community mentioned that they would want a USB drive with something like family photos or filled with survival books and documents, important things that they could potentially retrieve later. I recently did an entire video describing what you should back up offline. I'll post a link to it in the description and comments section below if you'd like to check it out. If you'd like to put something like maybe an old phone that you have that you don't use anymore and you load it with data or apps or important information you stick it in here, that may be another consideration. Now, whatever small electronic devices you find important, you want to consider adding these to your ammo can. Now, this one is pretty small. There's not a lot of space in a setup like this, but it will allow you to put critical devices at an affordable price. Also, I've got larger ammo cans that if I wanted to store more, I would repeat the same process doing the same thing and put that, uh, those items inside that larger can. So what would you add in your box? Let us know in the comments section below. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to help you build out your own ammo can EMP proof Faraday cage. If you do have any questions or any concerns, feel free to post those below. And again, check out our video that I'll post a link to in the cards and also here at the end screen that shows important information that you can download quickly and easily off the internet. As always, stay safe out there.